yeah, so I was wrong about my predictions about the OpenAI open source model. Sorry. I had predicted this model will not come with a permissive license. I was wrong. They actually used Apache 2.0, which is very permissive and allows the user to do almost anything. I had also predicted that there would not be a base model with this release. That I was correct about, unfortunately, because I think for fine tuning, that would have been better. Here's the brief technical rundown. It's an open weights model. It comes with an Apache 2.0 license, like I had mentioned before. The 20 billion parameter version is more likely to run on your local computer, and there are quantized versions that will make it even more efficient. And here was another prediction that was wrong of mine. This will actually show the chain of thought. I thought it wouldn't. LM Studio is free and it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Once you're in LM Studio, you might actually see a little notice come up asking if you want to download the GPT OSS. If that does not show, you can click over on the magnifying glass icon, go to the search, type in GPT OSS, and these will come up. I tried running the 20B version on my RTX 3070 and it got six tokens a second, which I think was okay speed, but it took 17 seconds to get the first token, which I think was kind of bad. So for right now, let's try out one of the quantized GGUF versions from the LM Studio community, and we'll see if that runs better on the 3070. This should also give you an idea of what you can run on your own computer. Now with LM Studio, these can run on your CPU, your GPU, or be spread out across both. If you have a GPU that helps, if not, you can try to run the quantized version on your CPU and see how it goes, depending on what kind of CPU you have. Now that the model's downloaded, you have to go back to the chat tab and you can click up here where it says select a model to load. Pick the model you want, in this case, GPT OSS 20B. Click on it. We can select the context length. We'll keep it at 4096 just to make it run efficiently. If you have powerful enough hardware, you can crank that up. For GPU offload, it's going to try to auto detect what's best. So it's going to use 11 out of 24. So that's cool. And we can show advanced settings. You can change some of the other settings if you're more technically inclined. Now I'll click load model. Once you have a new chat loaded up, you can optionally click on this wrench icon in the upper right corner to show settings. You can change the temperature. So the default is 0.8. But if you turn it down to something around more like 0.5, you'll get different responses usually less creative, but more accurate. You can also change the top K sampling, repetition penalty, min P, other settings if you feel so inclined. Click the wrench icon again to hide that. Now we can start chatting and we can do a test. For the first test prompt, what are some ideas for a small startup business an average person can do from home without a lot of resources to start off with? Now you can see the chain of thought going and it actually shows you all the chain of thought in this model. Now that the chain of thought is finished, it's giving our output. You can see the speed that it's going on my RTX 3070 combined with my older Xeon processor. I've also noticed from this in another test that I've done that it really likes to do markdown with these charts. And remember, this is totally offline. You can disconnect your computer from the internet and you can still run these chats. I know that a lot of tests for AI models kind of revolve around these general tests for the capabilities and I've got rubrics too, so that's fine. But lately I've been testing AIs and practical real world problem solving. So it's finished, but it lagged for a minute to hit the final token. What we got for a speed was 6.47 tokens per second and it took 2.25 seconds the first token, which was better than the full precision model. So let's see what it told us for some startup business ideas. It's got freelance writing, graphics design, virtual assistant, tutoring and coaching. You get the idea. It's come up with different ideas and a little bit of a blurb and some general ideas about how to get started with it. It also has some suggestions for keeping costs low and a 30 minute launch checklist. I like the part under final tips where it says start small, scale gradually, don't try to juggle too many services at once. I've had shiny object syndrome in business before. It's not good. It's better to specialize in one thing and get like amazingly good at that. That does it for me. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you want some early and exclusive content, follow me on X at Vectro. If you found some value in this video, please click the like button. If you're new to my channel and want to see me make more tutorials about open source AI, click the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I make a new video, hit the notification bell. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.